Shalom. Baruch Abba, Korim Lee Anthony. Hello and welcome. They call me Anthony. Thank you so much for joining us here at Sari for our weekly Torah teaching on the coming of Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. According to the word of Yahuwah, at this time, I always like to take a minute and give all praise, honor, and esteem to Yahuwah Elohim for the great wisdom and insight he has given us in his word to share with you concerning his Ben Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. To the Kodashim out there, thank you so much for your comments and for your support. If you are joining us here for the first time, a Baruch Abba. Welcome. There are orientation videos on the YouTube page. Orientation 1 and Orientation 2 will help you in your understanding of how we look at Scripture here. Now that we are assembled, let's join the believers as some final words are given to prepare for the coming of Yahushua HaMashiach, as the likeness of the days of Mitzrayim are spoken of. So at Timokani, are you ready? That's Bonaki. Let's jump right in. Deborim chapter 34, 12. We'll line up with 1st Yochanan chapter 3. We'll be looking at verses 4 and 5. And by all that mighty power, whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. So we pick up from last week and a transfer of power that was birthed out of B'nai Yisrael. Yochanan was likening B'nai Yahushua to the great signs and wonders that would be done by them in a time to come, saying, It has not yet been revealed what we shall be in all the signs and wonders, but we know that when he is revealed, that which Yahuwah sent him to do in the land of Mitzrayim, we shall be like him. Last week, that part of this section was good for the believers in Yahushua. It ended on a good note. This week notes a difference. Yochanan could not see what was to be revealed about us during his time. But what he wrote is being used here for the Edut, something that has never been done in recorded history. This is a sign and a wonder in itself that is testifying to Yahushua. Also, we know Yahushua is not recognized on the world stage today. To only a select few in the wilderness of world religion, he is revealing himself. People are coming out of the falsehood of world religion, and some are calling on the name of Yahushua. That is a sign and a wonder, too. All of a sudden, the name does make a difference. Just another revealing of what we shall be and all the signs and wonders. Also, if you have followed us from the beginning, you have witnessed a global pandemic of epic proportions, much like the ones written in the scriptures. And the true death toll globally may never be known. The word has weakly ushered in one global crisis after another. Even as we continue to wrestle with the effects of that pandemic, especially here in America, where descendants of the ancient tribe of Yehuda are once again in the double straits of a very powerful nation. And B'nai Yahushua is already beginning to do a sign in the word of Yahuwah. By now showing all that mighty power here in the verses. It is the mighty power done by the hand. Yad Chazach, the words used for mighty power. Yad Chazach is mighty hand. The fourth definition for hand is used of various special technical senses in the definition. This indicates the will. 
having a hand in something is seen down in Yochanan as whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness. This is a mighty power of the will against B'nai Yahushua. The Greek word for sin is G266. Hamatea. And it means to error and be mistaken. To miss the mark and be without a share in. To miss or wander from the path of uprightness and honor. To do or go wrong and wander from the Torah of Yahuwah. To violate it is sin, that which is done wrong. A violation of the spiritual law of Yahuwah Elohim by a single person or many. That's the end of the definition there. This word is used quite often in the verses here for this survey. This is rebellion. Rebellion by believers in Yahushua as well as outsiders. By committing this sin, lawlessness is also included. This is the mighty part of committing sin. Lawlessness, H4160, means to make one do something, to be the authors of a cause in order to acquire and provide something for one's self. This is saying selfish reasons cause a person to transgress the written word of Yahuwah. And this transgression is used in the keeping of the appointed times of Yahuwah, a sworn duty of anyone who is immersed in the name of Yahushua. To all the assemblies, if you have not been immersed in the covenant, you have not properly understood what it means to be immersed in the name of Ab, Yahuwah, his Ben, Yahushua, and you have not received any set-apart understanding at all. This is the believer in Yahushua who brings wrath upon themselves. In these survey lines, with this type, with the type of commitments they will choose to do during these special times. It is a mighty power that wills to break an oath given to Yahuwah. And all the great terror and sin is lawlessness. This is pretty self-explanatory. The great terror is what will happen in the life of the believer in Yahushua who sins in the type of selfish lawlessness described in that mighty power that they hold or held in the previous line of survey. This is the mighty power to choose to do the will of Yahuwah at the appointed times or not choose to do the will of Yahuwah at the appointed times. Unfortunately, even B'nai Yahushua will suffer because of bad choices and face great terror because of it. Sin is lawlessness speaks directly to not keeping the appointed times, among other things. This is understood from the definition for sin. But I want to remind you, although you once knew this, that Yahuwah, having saved the people out of the land of Mitzrayim, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. which Moshe performed in the sight of all of Yisrael. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. In him, there is no sin. Moshe performed, H62.13, Asa means to do, fashion and accomplish. Also, to make a point and institute something to observe and celebrate. He performed it 
in their sight, the iron, in their understanding, their mental understanding regarding spiritual things. All of the appointed times Yahuwah established through Moshe can be seen in the whole of their deliverance. And it started with the Pesach. It was instituted back then in the sight of all of Yisrael, in their understanding. You find the beginning of it in Shemot chapter 12. This is Exodus. Then when Yahuwah Elohim first gave the command to set the time apart. Remember it. The instructions surrounding it indicate one should not plan anything around these times other than preparing for it because it consumes that whole month from the very first day along with those that lead up to the Pesach and the days of Hamatzot that follow in chapter 13. The instructions are found to include counting the Omer. It is a most Kodesh month to Yahuwah. In fact, he even says, remember the month of Abib, for in it you came out of Mitzrayim, the whole month. The appointed times should not be despised under no circumstances. Notice what Moshe performed in their sight is seen as something manifested down in Yochanan. Here in the survey line where it reads, and you know. This is knowledge, understanding if you will, that he was manifested to take away our sins. The one drawn down in Yochanan is Yahushua, who was manifested during the appointed times to take away our sins. Who can forget that? It was during the Pesach, a time of great dedication by the people to do the will of Yahuwah. Sacrifice on the stake was done in the sight of all of Yisrael. And they talk about it to this day. So when we look at the survey lines, we then see just as Moshe performed it, and Yahushua was manifested in it to take away our sins, this line is also saying we should do it, keep it, and observe it, because in him there is no sin. Remember, this survey is still talking about the manner of love Ab has bestowed upon us, calling us B'nai Yahushua, the offspring of Yahushua the ones that are in him, Yahushua Benun, posterity, that we should not sin in forgetting these times. In him, there is no sin. It's not only speaking of his nature, but to the nature of his offspring. They should display his character. Look at it very closely. Because I'm showing you in the survey lines, the redemptive agenda of Yahuwah is to be observed at all cost by all of B'nai Yisrael, all of B'nai Yahushua, and everyone who wants to have assurance of salvation. To not do it is sin, and belief without works is dead, cut off. Yahushua chapter 1 verse 1 will line up with 1st Yochanan chapter 3 verses 6 and 7. This will have a continuation on it because of the length of the verses involved. This brings us to the great book of Yahushua, the servant of Yahuwah as we come down the stretch run to cross the river. Okay. So let me set this up on the screen here. Okay. 
Okay, so as we begin, this book began after the death of Moshe. Whoever abides in him does not sin. So I have to remind you all of video 65, titled Moshe Foresees the Future, the Anti-Mashiach. On the survey lines, Yahuwah Elohim showed him all of the earthly land of promise to B'nai Yisrael in a vision on Mount Nebo. And he showed him how it wound up under the control of demons. This was to spread throughout the world, the Western Sea. Of course, this was not pro the promised land in the everlasting state that Yahuwah has pre prepared for us in the invisible realm where demonic forces cannot break in to destroy. Video 66, the anointing of Moshe showed us how to overcome the obstacles involved in the redemptive plan that are demonically influenced. Surefire way to tell who is who. Because the journey we face is deceptive and the price for everlasting life is costly. And the anointing is priceless because the death of Moshe ushers in the battle against the unseen evil forces that seek to destroy the redemptive plan of Yahuwah given in the garden. It is a battle of the mind that we must all face here on this earth and no one is exempt. We must face it in order to get to the promised land of the everlasting state where Yahuwah Elohim dwells. This is a process that involves the teachings of Moshe, and we covered this too in video 67. Moshe died. See what else died. Now that transfer of power is complete. From last week, seen in video 68, the hand of Moshe, message to the Jews. Yahuwah now assembles the people, as it reads, after the death of Moshe. This officially begins the great book of Yahushua, to which Yochanan says, whoever abides in him does not sin. After the death of Moshe has a spiritual similarity to what is going on in Yochanan. Yochanan is speaking to the assembly after the death of Yahushua, when he says, whoever abides in him does not sin. This is another powerful example of the testimony of Yahushua coinciding with the covenant teachings of Moshe. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Miss the mark according to the definition for sin. Once again, it is not wise to miss this kingdom agenda at this time in history. Everything will occur at the times appointed. Abiding in the teachings of Moshe guide us into what it means to abide in Yahushua. The teachings show the way. It guides us so that we can identify the sin and then, then do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in his sight, in his understanding. And this is done by the servant of Yahuwah. Whoever sins has ne neither seen him or nor known him. The servant of Yahuwah for this line is seen as whoever that might be. If he sins, it is because he has neither seen him or known him. They have neither seen Yahuwah. This is the first hymn in the verse of Yochanan or known him. This second hymn is Yahushua. The two are one. Additionally, on the servant of Yahuwah, Moshe served Yahuwah as did Yahushua, who is seen as him over in the line of Yochanan. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. Yahuwah spoke to Moshe face to face even showing himself to him in ways that did not bring about Moshe's death. This we know, for it is written in the scriptures. 
It is also written in Yochanan's testimony that where even Yahushua said he has seen uh, both Moshe and Yahushua have known Yahuwah being used by him in extraordinary supernatural phenomenons written in scriptures that go beyond human understanding. But this part of the verse in Yochanan is in reference to Yahushua, the servant of Yahuwah after the death of Moshe, the ben of Yahuwah. A little bit about Yahuwah here, H3068 means the existing one. And all of the root words identify the emotions of the soul that govern the body. Also, one of the verbs used to identify the character of his nature if you could call it that, Haya, H1961, means to be, come to pass, exist, and happen, to take place. This is the prophetic nature of who he is. His name, the one he chose, literally means to make things come to pass, to make it happen, so that it takes place according to what he has said. His name is written well over 5,000 times in the scripture, making the whole book a prophecy, a written account he will bring to pass, because his name is there in the Ibri. He will make things happen so that it takes place according to what he spoke. This is just a snapshot of who he really is and what he is capable of doing, the likes of which cannot be searched out since no one can count the number of the stars, nor call them by name, as he can, for this is written. So we have no idea of what we are really dealing with. What we do know is this book and the things written therein are not to be taken lightly or tampered with. He does all of this so that we as believers can have some proof of his works so that the coming generations can see and place confidence in his word, believe in who he is, and reinforce the safety of placing trust in his plan for everlasting life when times get hard and the way seems clouded. Prophecy is the key. We remember the ancient record and his prophecies are like no other. To read about them is to see them and know him as well. It came to pass that Yahuwah spoke to Yahushua ben Nun, Moshe's assistant. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. It came to pass that Yahuwah spoke to Yahushua ben Nun, and I praise Yahuwah for he is worthy, amen. Look at his mercy in the light of his coming judgment. He still warns the believers and Yahushua as if they did not understand what was previously discussed. He now speaks came to pass that Yahuwah spoke to Yahushua ben Nun. This is the little children of Yahushua. Over in Yochanan, B'nai Yahushua. They are called this because Yahuwah spoke to the building of Yahushua's posterity, which is the meaning of ben Nun, his offspring. Nun identifies increase and propagation. Okay. As we mentioned, propagation is the breeding of specimens of a plant or animal by natural processes from the parent stock. Yochanan calls them little children, by name of Yahushua. Yahuwah spoke prophetically to Yahushua's seed. Spoke to his seed as well as him with a warning saying, let no one deceive you. 
the word then identifies him as Moshe's assistant. Something was said about that too. Yahushua is seen as the he that is righteous. In the verse of Yochanan, Yahuwah is speaking to this righteousness of his posterity, characterizing them. Now, Moshe is the other he down in Yochanan, he who practices righteousness. We have gone over this in detail in video 67. Moshe died, hear what else died. This practicing of righteousness is a religious practicing of everything, including the appointed times of Yahuwah and worship that was written by Moshe. Including the three times in the year everyone was to assemble and worship to Yahuwah. Let no one deceive you by not practicing this righteousness. As I have mentioned in the breakdown of these words, this is not your own righteousness, something that you do every day to make yourself feel good. This is the practice of, of observing the word of Yahuwah. All of them, especially the appointed times, year in and year out, every year. This has been both the theme throughout this message and the definition on the word for G4160 practice. This practice that is to be religiously observed according to the definition for righteous, uh, G1343, along with the, the other roots, including G1342, this is doctrine concerning the way in which a man may attain a state approved by Yahuwah, among other things, keeping the commands of Yahuwah Elohim in the definition there. So do not be deceived and get this twisted. This is something given to assist B'nai Yahushua. Yahuwah used Moshe to establish the commands, wrote them down. And Yahushua is Moshe's assistant. In like manner, Yahushua's offspring are to practice what Moshe established. This is what Yahuwah is speaking about. For these survey lines, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. Yahushua chapter 1. We will continue in verse 1 through 3, followed by the uh, book of Yochanan. First Yochanan chapter 3, we'll be looking at verses 8 and 9. Saying, Moshe, my servant, is dead. He who sins is of the devil. This is continued from verse 1 where Yahuwah begins to prepare the people for what was shown in the vision he gave Moshe on Mount Nebo. So let's go over some things. Nebo was a demon in Babel. We covered this in video 65 entitled Moshe foresees the future, the anti-Mashiach. Yahuwah Elohim showed Moshe what the people were going to face in the land. And here in Yochanan, this demon shows up as Diablos. G1228, now called the devil. This demon who opposes the cause of Yahuwah and is prone to slander and accusing falsely. That's what he does. Those who side with him are said to act the part of the devil. That's how the word is used metaphorically in the definition. Only what they do is not an act. Especially if one knows the word, and most do, the devil is clearly seen and what people then do. Make no mistake about it. Demonic play is at work in the world and not as sinister as one might expect. It simply opposes the will of Yahuwah. It does this by slander and accusing falsely. 
clearly makes light of his word. Okay? In a number of ways. In a number of ways he, he does this, as he did in the garden. You will not surely die if you slander the great name of Yahuwah Elohim. He even falsely accuses Yahushua of being Jesus and so many other false names. All of this happens because, as it reads, Moshe, my servant, is dead. So now video 67 comes into play. Moshe died. Hear what else died. What died are the writings of Moshe. Speak against those slanderous things the devil is doing. It's covered in the videos. No one cares about those writings anymore. They are dead. That is Old Testament, and we have a New Testament now, is what Moshe say. Someone named Jesus did away with the writings of Moshe. So according to what is written, Moshe, my servant, is dead. Whatever the reason why, not following what is written, calls sin over in Yochanan. Call sin over in Yochanan, and whoever he is, is seen here siding with the devil, according to that definition. So he is dead, who is of the devil. Now therefore arise, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Kum means to arise in a hostile sense, to come on the scene and become powerful to maintain oneself and be established, to be confirmed, fixed, valid, proven, and fulfilled, all of that. Arise, it also means to investigate. Arise, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. He showed up in the garden with Adam and Hawa, and after the flood, he showed up again in Nimrod, the mighty hunter, before Yahuwah. We looked at the evidence, if you remember, in one of the previous videos, and now he is here. Go over this yard. For this purpose, the band of Yahuwah was manifested. The mark of the accusative is on the yard. Everlasting life is what is at stake here. That is why the devil is in this frame in order to oppose it. H3383, Yarden, means descendant. It is a river that runs some 200 miles, passing through the land of Israel and emptying into the Dead Sea. The root means to march down, to send or come down of revelation. Rise, come down of revelation. How about that for a definition? The revelation is Chaim Olam. For this purpose, the Ben of Yahuwah was manifested, and Yahushua is the Ben of Yahuwah. You and all this people, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You here in the book of Yahushua is he over in Yochanan. You and all this people, people are coming along for the journey. But he's going to be the reason they succeed because Moshe laid all of Tar hands on Yahushua that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is supernatural because the devil is a supernatural being. This occurred once. This next fulfillment is the same game on a higher level, if you will. It gets tougher now. Too tough for the people for this next showdown. This book of Yahushua is a near fulfillment of a much larger picture spanning generations. It is prophetic and futuristic for our time. So welcome to the future. To the land which I am giving to them. B'nai Yisrael, whoever has been born of Yahushua, 
does not sin. The word for land is spiritual in the definition. This earthly land is also symbolizing the spiritual land everlasting, which is the goal of all of scripture. The will of Yahuwah Elohim is done in the Shemaim as it is on the earth, according to the prayer Yahushua taught us to pray. The land which I am giving to them, B'nai Yisrael, this is whoever that might be who believes in Yisrael, that what Elohim has caused to prevail in his redemptive plan for Chaim Olam. Then, whoever that might be, Yahuwah is the one speaking in the verse, that is who I is. He said, I am. This is represented by Yahushua down below in Yochanan, but not represented in the Greek writings. It is only recognized with a blanket term called theos, which you see here, you will not find in scriptures. But this is what it was. Okay, we've already looked at that in the last video. Number 68, the hand of Moshe, message to the Jews. Go back and review that. You can go there to see the word itself lining up to speak of this manner of love Yahuwah has bestowed on the Banim of Yahushua. This whole chapter of Yochanan is dealing with this personal relationship Yahushua has with his believers. That is being confirmed by the book of Yahushua, who is now in control. And because of lack of understanding by the Greeks, their error in this writing here is exacerbated by others who have wrongfully rewritten the Berit Kadashah. They write Elohim there in many of the restored name Bibles. Okay, if you got a restored name Bible, you'll see the word Elohim here. That's not lining up. And it gets worse. The Christians wrote God there. They couldn't figure, they couldn't figure out Theos. Couldn't figure him out either. As I have mentioned, Yahuwah has only one brought forth Ben. And that is Yahushua, period. Okay? We are the offspring of Yahushua. Whoever has been born of Yahushua does not sin. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. Again, this is Yahushua, seen here in Yochanan as his, and representing Yahuwah, the one speaking, seen as I. This confirms the previous line of survey. Yahuwah gave it to him. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. And to his seed, Yochanan says, for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin. So let's look at this line. This is spiritual. What comes from above, the line above where Yahuwah is speaking, says every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. The seed of that verse is what Yochanan is addressing down below on earth, if you will, the line beneath. His seed remains in him, whoever that might be, and he cannot sin. If we are born of Yahushua, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon is then manifested when it says, for his seed remains in him. This is physical and earthly. The seed in the foot, figuratively, figuratively speaking, can be seen. Then Yahuwah says, I have given you. This is something spiritual that cannot be seen when it is given, but manifested in that he cannot sin. See it in the survey line. B'nai Yahushua, or the seed of Yahushua. 
This is confirming yet again that what is written and followed out of the Greek where it ends up promoting a demon is wrong. Children of God, born of God, all, all of that is of the devil. All of it. Yahushua's name was to be put here. But misunderstanding this manner of love that Yochanan is continuing to talk about in this chapter led to another cover-up, a blanket term, because they did not know him. Therefore, they do not know us or what is going on in the scripture. As I said to Moshe, because he has been born of Yahushua. Yahushua, a Nabi like Moshe. But let's glean a little more from this setting. Okay? And look at what this word is saying. I'm going to read it. Moshe, my servant, is dead. He who sins is of the devil. Now therefore arise, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Go over this yard. For this purpose, the bin of Yahuwah was manifested, you and all this people, that he might destroy the works of the devil to the land which I am giving to them, B'nai Yisrael. This is a masterpiece. Whoever has been born of Yahushua does not sin. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin. And as I said to Moshe, because he has been born of Yahushua. Very interesting. Well, well. Amen. Interesting message for some interesting times. But do not be deceived. Life has a way of making one think that the word of Yahuwah is not that serious. And we really don't have to keep up with his way of doing things. Maybe it's life. Or maybe, just maybe, it is a demon that has tricked you into not keeping the word of Yahuwah for your salvation. And trust me, nothing in this world is worth risking salvation. Remember, Satan is after those who have the testimony of Yahushua, HaMashiach, and keep the commandments of Yahuwah. So to the seed, if indeed you are, do not be deceived. Let's count the yarn. This is the time of the witness. Amen. If you have not already, go ahead and subscribe. Till next time, Lahitra Oat. See you later. Shabbat Shalom.